everybody, welcome back. Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Uh, start by saying thank you to all my subscribers, thank you to all my patrons, and um, I've got that uh, that draw coming up for you very soon um, for the to win the KC135. So, um, oh, and the uh, white 666 truck. Uh, and what I need to say to you, um, if you are a patron, I'm not quite sure what to do here. I asked you to let me know if you want to be entered into that draw. I've only had a few people come back to me and say they want to be entered in the draw, but I wanted to make the draw open to everybody who's a patron. So I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to only open it to the people that have said, please enter me or open it to everyone. Um, let me know what you think, guys. Um, so this is part seven of the uh, Road and C141 build in 144 scale. And as you'll know from the other parts, I've added a cockpit, I've added some brass to the undercarriage, and now we're on the uh, fit of the wings. Now today is Thursday, Thursday the 26th of September 2019, and this was applied on Tuesday. So I put a little bit more on yesterday where I'd sort it trunk back. So this has had um, 48, 24 hours to, to go off. So basically this, this video is probably going to be done over maybe two days um, because I'm sure that when I rub this down I'm going to have to add more fill or whatever in here and then I'm going to leave that to dry. Reason being, um, I think I've said this many times before, the, the newer modelers out there probably won't know this, if you start adding lots of filler and stuff and sanding it back, you need to be giving it a good couple of days to go off, even if you can get on with something else, give it a week because the worst thing you'll find is here where you've got, there's a lot of glue in this area, there's a lot of filler, there's super glue, there's Mr. Surfacer, there's all sorts. Once it starts to dry, um, it will shrink and you will end up with an uneven surface and it won't show till after it's painted. So you need to be a little bit careful there with that one. So um, basically what we're gonna do now is sand out this, this area here and uh, get this all flat and then scribe some lines across ready for the walkway decals to go on. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna spray these engines. Now, somebody asked me if they could see a close up of these engines, and here we go. This is how they're looking. And you can see that on the, well, that is in the middle, that is, they're sprayed first with GX2, which is a, a Mr. Hobby product, which is a high gloss black. Then they've gone over with Alclad stainless steel, um, all over, we've, we've masked off the outer rim went over with our clad stainless steel and then sprayed a gloss varnish over that just to knock it back a bit. Then, sorry, I sprayed a matte varnish over it just to knock it back. Then I masked off the, 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 the cone and the actual blades themselves with uh, Viejo uh, masking fluid. There we go, 28850. Um, and sprayed the outside in chrome over the high gloss black. Then I've gone over that to knock that back with an X22 um, Tamiya gloss varnish. Now, with our clads, if you put a gloss varnish over the top, it generally knocks them back. But I find if you use our clad um, aqua gloss, it doesn't tend to knock it back. If you go back to the latter parts of my Saturn V build, you'll see there I did the uh, command module the same way. I did the GX2 and then the our clad chrome and then put on the um, the aqua gloss on top and it does look quite quite chrome like so uh, yeah really happy with the way that's come out um, so now we need to spray the cone in the center this this um, XF 53 neutral gray sorry about that guys that was a, a delivery uh, so yeah we're just gonna pass the uh, put the paper over the top I've punched a hole in it and that will enable me to mask the uh, the cone off so, and I've done all four of them there because basically I'm going to have to just spray them very lightly and then leave them to go hard before I take the paper off, otherwise I'll just take the paint with it. So that ring of the doorbell and the dog going frantic was a delivery from Backman Europe. Now, I want to give them a shout out here. After my little rant video, which I took down after about 20 minutes, um, and my moaning on one of my other videos, uh, I'm absolutely gobsmacked I had a I've emailed Roden twice and not had a reply at all so thumbs down to Roden thanks for that um, 
I emailed Backman and got a reply, if you remember, and I was it's basically said that you need to send them the sprue by recorded delivery. You had to have made the purchase within three months. You had to send them the receipt. You had to cut the barcode off the box. You had to do all sorts and send it all back to them and then wait for up to eight months to get your parts. Well, I thought that was awful. Lo and behold, I had an email, um, was it yesterday or Tuesday? I say again, today is Thursday. I think it was Tuesday evening I had an email from them, from Nicola at uh, Backman. They said, very sorry to hear about your problems. Um, I'll get you a sprue in the post today. So if you can give me her address. So I um, sent her my address yesterday and here we are. I've had a parcel come this morning. Nice big box. I've ripped my address off so that you don't all send me things. And uh, really gobsmacked by the customer service. And as I say, I will knock someone if they're poor. I will praise them if they're good. So, yeah, as I say, Roden didn't even bother replying to my email twice. Um, these guys did. So, dear Nigel, please find enclosed a replacement for your damaged sprue. I asked them if they wanted the old sprue back. They didn't. So, here we go. Nice little bubble wrap bag, um, which I can reuse because the seal hasn't been broken. And in here we've got one sprue and one clear windscreen and all the windows and stuff for my C5A. C5B, should I say. Um, and no black spots which is good it's going to need a dip it's not very um clear but that's uh that's just rodent for you i guess so there we go really really chuffed with that um really made up thank you very much nicola i will give you a shout out i will be on back to you tell you it's come and um yeah so basically Backman are part of pocket bond if you're into your model railways you'll know Backman is a model railway company really really made up obviously they had a spare kit there or kits for spares and they've sent me that sprue so that's really really good thank you very much so on with these engines so i've got some as i say xf53 here and that's all um mixed up with some some real colors high compatibility thinner there's no reason why i use this over the uh, mr color leveling thinners it's just the first one i pick up so i need a piece of paper here just to protect the bench as I say normally I would spray this in the booth so I'm just going to make sure the nozzle's clear and now we can just basically go on and paint these nose cone parts and there we go that's the color that the whole aircraft's going to be it's like um it looks like the trash haulers had their own colour. They, I, I always thought they would have been gunship grey, but they're not. They're this, um, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's, it's a, a, a certain grey. And it looks like the C5As, the C141s, the Herx, basically anything that was in the uh, mobility air wing, or air mobility wing, would have been uh, this colour grey. So just give them another quick blast. like so and there we go and they're all painted now this is something that a lot of people say oh my god you shouldn't do that well I say yes I should I'm gonna pour that back in there rather than waste it get the cloth wipe the side of the airbrush off and also rather than waste what's in the airbrush I'm just gonna lightly spray some of this over this area here just to see how good the the filling has come out and there we go and you can see there I just get that quite heavy you can see I can catch that in the light. If you remember, I put Mr. Surfacer in there and I sanded it back and polished it and everything. If I can get this in the light, you can see, see how it shrunk back? So those lines have come back where the tailplane meets the fuselage. They've shrunk. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. So if I'd have just carried on and got that done and primed it and painted the model, I'd go back a couple of days after, after it's decoled and varnished and everything, and I'd see those lines. That's what you don't want to see. So that's why I say 
leave it for a couple of days before you do any finishing okay so as i say i'll be doing this work on this now and i probably won't go back to it again until saturday right so i've removed the paper now and as we can see the cones are gray but i'm not over the moon with how it looks because the masking isn't actually that good so i'm gonna have to go around once next time i've got some paint mixed up i'll go around with a brush and just uh, make those look a bit better and as i say the beauty of the design of this kit is this rim is um this leading edge is, is shiny like that so i can completely build the model completely finish it decal it matte coat it everything and then just pop these in with a bit of white glue and they will stand out like a sore thumb on that matte gray and i'll be just sat like that looking looking lovely under the wing so there we go and when i say looking lovely i'm not blowing my own trumpet um <clears throat> i just mean looking lovely because they're bright and shiny so what are we going to do about this now as you know i've got my let's get rid of this paper as you know i've got my lovely new uh infinity sanding sticks that i absolutely love i've only used two of those i've only used three of these i must try some more um in fact i'm going to try something now there's one here which is a 7000 grit 7000 grit now this should polish let's see what it does as we can see there it certainly does polish the plastic so this should be really good for uh, polishing paint and stuff i'm not going to try it right now you can also use them wet and that gives the plastic a nice smooth finish because this rodent plastic has got a in areas it's quite coarse but it's all over it's got like a very very fine finish to it it's not as bad as airfix um some of the airfix plastic is ridiculous um as we all know that the hellcat is, is a joke um, i'm actually putting together a video on that on how to um paint it and it's i'm struggling to get a finish to be honest uh, so i've got an 800 grit here i'm just going to lightly sand over there so we'll see what happens we've got some mr servicer there so 800 grit is polishing that and then if I go over with the 7000 we can see it's you can see now that grainy finish if I can catch it in the light we've got this grainy finish here there you go so it's nothing like as bad as airfix but um it's there so we should be able to just sand that back and I think really with, with this bit of sanding, that will get, get that back good enough. I'm only using the 7000 so I can show you the finish that's on there. But that's good enough for primer. In fact, it might even give it a bit of a key. So we've got our lovely new sanders, which I'm really, really chuffed with. But I don't want to start clogging them up with filler. So what I'm going to do is go back to my old, my old stuff. Now I've got this one here. This is a flat... Um, coarse sanding stick and I'm just going to literally I'm using no pressure whatsoever I'm just going to rub over this area because it looks like what we've got is the the box is flat and then the wings go off and there is quite a sharp um, line between the two by the look of it there we go so we can see that we're sanding away plastic here because if you remember I put some more card in there to wedge it up again I said I'm using no force whatsoever I'm just literally just rubbing over it I'm going to change sides I know for some of you this is like watching paint dry but I have had a couple of emails and people or messages and people have said I would like to see this to see how you overcome this um, this wing problem. So, if you're bored, fast forward. Don't leave me a snidey comment because I'm not interested. Um, so yeah, if you're bored, fast forward. But uh, it would appear that some people want to see this, and that's absolutely fine. I've got to do it whether the camera's on or off. So, it makes no odds to me. 
so that is coming out we've got quite a lot of mr servicer in this area here because even though that 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 box there if you remember that was further back i think the roots affected as well so um sanding is required and i know that at least one person has bought uh, has bought this kit on the back of my um of my getting it andy andy richards he's uh, he, he one of my original followers and he's he gets a lot of comments he does a lot of comments on my videos and they're always informative and they're always positive which is nice thanks for that andy and he's bought the uh, the lizard i think it's called the lizard scheme one and uh, as i said there's, there's it's amazed me the amount of interest this thing has raised and also the amount of you guys out there that used to crew on them or work on them or whatever and i'm getting some really great feedback from you and i won't mention any names but some of you are sending me some uh, images and stories and it's, it's, uh, it's great i'm loving it um and i'm loving the plane as well i'm i'm considering the anagrand one um i'm still considering the anagrand c5 as well but uh something else that's caught my eye is the models vit russian company the uh, 70 second scale an124 what interests me about that is it's fiberglass the fuselage the wings tail tail planes are fiberglass and then the rest of it is injection molded plastic but it does look very nice so um i've also been playing with the engines on the c5 the 144 scale and they're a bit of a mess to be honest they're not very good um so i've ordered the metallic details aftermarket engines for the c5 now we'll see what they're like when they come but from the images i'm seeing they're not very good they're, they're not the right shape it looks like they're too rounded on the actual um compressor stage cowling so we'll, we'll have a look at them when they come but the um the internal detail is really really nice so what i might do is do a combination of the the metallic detail parts with the um with the rodent parts because the rodent engine shape looks correct they've got that horrible those horrible lumps on them instead of the blowout doors so what i might do is actually make a a resin cowling from the rodent part and then take a mold off it and then make four four intakes and then i can offer them to you guys as well if you want and you'll basically use my parts and the rodent parts or my parts rodent parts metallic detail parts whatever if you want to build a nicer um nicer set of engines for your rodent galaxy or indeed the uh, otaki one i got these things back out the bin if you remember i showed you these they're awful I got them back at the bing so i was thinking i might use the front off them but they're so bad they're not worth using right so there we go so we can see it's starting to blend out and never be too afraid guys of using a coarse sander i mean this thing is very very coarse it's probably I don't know 100 grit 120 but i'm not pushing it so it's not doing you know it's not doing any damage the problem you've got with using finer sanders is you do a lot of rubbing and you generate a lot of heat uh, and because this is quite hard it will also make it quite flat and you can see i'm going through to that super glue there you can see the black ink un underneath the filler that's not an issue and i'm making sure i'm staying away from this hump in the center i'm just going to blend out this this wing box here where it goes into the uh, trailing edge i can see that they feel there's a step just going to keep sanding until that step's gone and keep running the sanding stick up that area there there we go
there now. It's just started absolutely pouring down here. So a uh, good day for me sat at the bench. pouring down. Didn't know they forecast rain today. I thought we were going to have bright weather, but never mind. So there we go. That's uh, that's the initial stages of that done. I need to do some more blending there. You need to be careful here, guys, if you are new. I'm just going to give you some advice. If you are sanding with a fairly coarse stick, be careful not to do this. Because what you'll end up with is a line there, you'll make a step. What you need to do is sand into the area you're, you're contouring so that the, the, the sanding stick is actually making, making that shape, okay? And the same here. And that way it's going to blend in rather than uh, rather than take away from that area. Now I'm going to go on to my flory. This is a I don't know. This is about a 240 grit, I guess. And I'm just going to sand around this leading edge. Now there is a bulge here. You've got um, an air intake there. I'm guessing to this air conditioning or. Or it might be the APU intake or something. No doubt somebody's going to come and tell me because there's a lot of you out of this aircraft inside out. And there we go. You can see that's blended in. And initially all I'm doing is getting the rough shape because I know I'm going to have to put more on. So I'm being careful not to destroy. There's some vent detail there. I don't want to destroy that. There we go. Then I'm going to quickly run over this in a circular motion just to take out any sanding marks from that coarser stick. And we can see now that basically we have got our wing box all blended in and it just looks like one. Now come back to that in a couple of days and it will look different because the, the filler will shrink back. Now I'm going to put some more Mr. Servicer in this area here. But the first thing I'm going to do is get my scriber and just go over the panel lines. And make sure they're pulled back into that wing root. Do that one there. Just pull them back to fill it stop, and then you know you're in the right place. And I'm just going to run. Run up that one, run up that one, and there we go. So I know now we're in the right place. Now this one here feels like it's stopping short. We've got a bit of a super glue there or something. So I'll have to deal with that afterwards. In fact, no, I'll deal with it now because that's what you want to see. Be careful not to just drag it across 
because it will jump out of the groove and make a mess. So we can just pull that back like that and pull it into that super glue. And there we go, that's that done. And then we can sand over it and we can check that our panel lines are there. And they all go into that wing root. All right. And then using the back of this one, this is the Flory polishing, the back of this a polisher. We just go over it now. In fact, now that we've got the most of the uh, filler and everything gone, let's go on to our little infinity, infinity, I keep calling it infinity. It's got the thousand grit here. This is the, um, the soft sponges. You can get them from these guys here. I know I keep promoting him, but he gave me these to try on the channel and I'm ever, ever so grateful. Thanks very much, Ed. And I've got to be honest, I love them. I absolutely love them. Um, and the reason I don't use them on filler is because I'm worried that I'll clog them up. Now, eventually I'm going to have to try all the on filler to see if they do clog up. But I don't want to, I know for a fact that you start getting filler and stuff. Like with this one here, you can see there, that's clogged up. You can sometimes scrape it out, but you can wipe it on your jeans. It does, it's clogged up, it's, it's had it. Um, so basically you can, I've, I've, I've seen people wash them out in thinners before, but with these, it dissolves the glue. So that doesn't work either. I'm just gonna do some more sanding in this area here. And what I'm gonna do then is mask off on that panel line and I'm gonna paint this whole area with Mr. Surfacer and then blend it out to that panel line because we've still got a bit of a step but if I keep sanding away this trailing edge I'll end up with nothing there so there we go and also the other thing I've just remembered I put some Mr. Surfacer on this trailing edge because we had a bit of a rough finish in a couple of areas I'm guessing that's just typical of this manufacturer, I guess. Right, I can still feel some undulation in there. So what I could do is go on with a magic marker, mark it up <clears throat> and then sand it. I don't, want to, I don't want to use magic marker anymore because I'm close to being finished. And one of the problems with magic marker is when you spray your primer over the top, it will come through. So if you end up with some there, I may get an issue with these blocks here. I doubt it because they're underneath the filler, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to use pencil. So you do exactly the same thing. You can just go over the pencil. The problem is with pencil, it's harder to see. In certain lights, you can't see it at all. And then I've got this. Um, this is the Matador range, again from uh, Infini. And I've got my 400 grit here. And I can just go over the top. I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm just rubbing it just to remove the pencil. And we can see that we've got pencil still there in that middle area. So we're going to have to put some <clears throat> Mr. Surfacer, I think, over that because it's going to be so thin. So I'll paint this whole area now with Mr. Surfacer. I'll mask these off and then I'll just paint this whole area with Mr. Surfacer and then we can sand that all again when it's dry and now I'm going to sand this um, tailplane area as well because if you remember how it, I saw that it shrank so hopefully this paint won't clog up my new stick we've got to try it out at some point haven't we so again no pressure just letting the stick do the work and we can see there that where the the shrinkage has happened where it was all glued and everything And there you go you can see there the lines where the it's quite incredible actually this paint has only been on here for probably 20 minutes and it's not clogging the stick by the look of things so that's good I'm just going to do some more sanding here to try and get the area to blend out a bit better As I say in the pictures I've seen it looks like this area here between the scribe lines is completely blended and then fore and aft you can see a, a join so 
that's what I've done now I am going to have to fill that you can see there we've got the line where it shrunk we can also see there's a bit of a sink mark there and um, basically what's happened is it's got it shrunk back probably because there's a lot of glue in there and there we go we can see now that starting to blend out on that starboard tailplane. I'm going to have to rescribe that line across there. That's fine. And there we go. So that'll be good enough. I'll paint some Mr. Service over that and that'll be that sorted. And there we go guys. That's uh, that's the Mr. Servicer on, on the tailplane and on the wings. And uh, I've put some more underneath here as well. Once that's gone off, I'll be going in there with a cotton bud and uh, removing that. If you remember, the corners of the wings were all damaged in the box. I've actually got to do some work on one of these as well, I think. Oh, no, they're okay. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the corners here, I've, I've had to fill. So, yeah, we'll see how they look when they're sanded out. Um, and then we'll basically do some more sanding really on the on the top once that's gone off but as i say i'm going to leave this until saturday uh before i sand this anymore if i see it sinking back what i'll probably do is um put some more on off camera but i'm not going to start attacking this until saturday and then we'll blend that out we'll get it nice and smooth we'll get some primer on it and again we'll leave it for a couple of days just to make sure it doesn't sink back because one of the features i can see from uh, some images I've managed to find some of the best images believe it or not it's heartbreaking but for me as an engineer it's heartbreaking to see but you see these things all broken up in the scrapyard um, in fact there's a, the best image I found with the tailplane was with the it was sort of cut through here and the tail was hanging off so you had a good image here um, but basically yeah you can see in the scrapyard you'll see certain areas that you you won't be able to see it's always worth looking at scrapyard photos for instance, the B-52, I was looking for images of the um, downward ejection uh, doors in the fuselage. And there was a, a picture of a fuselage that had been cut up and the nose was on its side, giving you a perfect image of that area. Normally, you know, everything's looking up and it's all sort of looking in a perspective along the length of the fuselage. There's nothing square on. And this picture was dead square on. The, the side of the fuselage was sort of led on its side, so the camera was looking here. You know, it was... Uh, it was great. It was sad to see. I hate seeing these things get smashed up. Um, I love it when I see the B-52s getting pulled out the scrapyard and put back into service. Um, unfortunately, these old, old girls, that won't happen. But um, I saw quite a moving picture of a, a pilot flew one of these back to, back to the scrapyard for its final flight. And he stood there and he's actually kissing the fuselage um, to say thanks, old girl, you know. And uh, yeah, it's sad, really. Um, but then some of you probably think I'm bloody crazy for getting... <laughs> <laughs> tet up about it but never mind so let this go off now for a couple of days let that go for a couple of days we'll rub it down and we're going to get some primer on it um i didn't realize this was going to happen i'm really sorry that we're uh, having to slow things down i didn't realize i was going to have using so much mr servicer and also so much glue um that's one of the biggest problems is it's not so much the mr servicer it's the glue and if you've got areas that need to be really strong and you've got to use a lot of glue then it will shrink back um, particularly the softer the plastic the, the, the Hasegawa plastic is very hard that won't shrink back so much but the um, what I found like with Airfix the very very soft plastic Airfix use you end up with a hell of a trench so um yeah so there we go um, happy with how that's coming out it's all looking good and in the next part we'll show you all about this um, getting this smoothed out and primed I'm sorry this has been a very short video guys there's not really much to do i i i, I want to get a video out there today um I, I guess the next one will have to be made over a couple of days and it'll include the sanding and the priming and everything but i want to get this video out there today just to sort of one to 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 get the good news out there about backman and um you know that what i said before was wrong and basically just to uh just to let you know that I'm still on it, okay? Um, I'm tempted to start another kit today, and it's something you won't believe I've started. Uh, and I'm on this sort of trash hauler thing at the moment. 
and um but it's good because it's getting my mojo back and i'm really looking forward to uh doing another build so i'm tempted to start this other kit today um let's see where we go but thanks for watching this this has been part seven um in part eight as i say we'll do some more sanding in that and i'll see you all soon thanks for watching Bye bye